Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our fifth lesson on the ninth topic of Form 4, which is called Photoelectric Effect. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that you will regret more about the things you never tried than the things you tried and failed. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at the energy of photons and the Planck's constant. So the circuit shown can be used to investigate the relationship between the frequency of the photons F, the stopping potential Vs, and the maximum kinetic energy Ke max of the emitted photoelectron. So this is our circuit here. So you can see it has uh, what we are calling a photocell. Then of course it has a microammeter for measuring current in micro amperes then of course you also have a voltmeter for measuring any uh, potential differences then we have a variable resistor which can be used to vary the amount of resistance hence varying both the uh, potential uh, difference and also the current uh, courtesy of the ohms law which stated that v is equals to ir such that if you increase or if you vary resistance it will uh, give you corresponding change of values in the potential difference and also uh, the ammeter reading or simply uh, the current. Then also we also have our source of power here. Then of course we have monochromatic light, the source of monochromatic light. Then of course we have the color filter so that we can obtain uh, different colors so that we can identify their values of uh, stopping potential. So the frequency is varied using different color filters. So you can see we have our color filter here. So for each color filter, uh, the potential difference is varied by sliding the jockey until no current is registered. Then the voltmeter reading is taken. So remember that when no current is being registered, the value of the voltmeter reading, that is what we are calling the stopping voltage or the stopping potential. So stopping potential is simply the a voltmeter reading or the potential when the current is actually zero. Then, of course, the battery terminals are reversed so that the electrons emitted are attracted back to the cathode. So you can see we have the positive terminal. We have connected it to the uh, negative or the cathode of this particular photocell. Then uh, the negative terminal, we have connected it to uh, the positive terminal of our photocell. So the reason is simply because uh, the battery terminals, they are reversed so that the electrons emitted are attracted back to the cathode. So remember, once this particular light uh, hits this particular cathode, the electrons are, go are, are going to be emitted. But immediately they are emitted, they'll be attracted back. Why? Because this particular cathode is connected to the positive terminal. So remember, these electrons cannot move to this plate because this plate is connected to the negative terminal. And remember, unlike charges will repel each other. So the electrons emitted will stick on this particular cathode because the electrons are negatively charged. Then the cathode is connected to the positive terminal. So they'll, they'll still be attracted uh, to that particular uh, cathode. So this is a table of results. We have some colors here, the violet, blue, green, a yellow. Then we have some orange color here. Then you can see that the frequency of the incident radiation, when the frequency is 4.8, uh, the stopping potential is around 1.2. Then when we increase the frequency to 5.2, the stopping potential increases to about 0.28. So you can see an increase in the frequency is leading to an increase in the stopping potential. Therefore, we can say that the frequency of the incident radiation is directly proportional to the stopping potential Vs, as we shall see uh, graphically. So as the value of the frequency of the incident radiation increases, the stopping potential also increases. Similarly, as the value of the stop, that is the frequency of the incident radiation decreases, the stopping potential will also decrease. Similarly, you can see that as the frequency increases, also, uh, the, the maximum kinetic energy is also increasing. Uh. Then also a decrease in the uh, frequency of the incident radiation leads to a decrease in the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted photoelectrons. So the frequency is directly proportional to both the stopping potential and directly proportional to the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted photoelectrons. Therefore, their graphs, we obtain them, uh, we expect them to be straight line graphs as we shall see in our next slide. Next. 
we analyze a graph of a stopping potential Vs against the frequency F of the incident radiation. Now, from our previous slide, we've just looked at a table which had uh, some sample values for uh, the frequency F of the incident radiation, stopping potential uh, Vs and the maximum kinetic energy uh, of the emitted photoelectrons. So from that table, we were able to clearly see that the higher the frequency of the incident radiation, the higher the stopping potential. Also, the lower the frequency of the incident radiation, the lower the stopping potential. Therefore, that shows us that the frequency of the incident radiation will always be directly proportional to the stopping potential. So such a relationship is direct proportionality relationship. So graphically, uh, it will be represented by a straight line graph as uh, such as the one shown here. So you can see the smaller the frequency of the incident radiation, uh, the higher the stopping potential and vice versa. So because the graph is a straight line graph, we are going to uh, analyze uh, the equation of Einstein's photoelectric equation uh, graphically so that we compare it with the equation of a straight line graph, which is usually y is equals to mx plus c. Now, from Einstein's photoelectric equation, we were able to show that the energy of the incident radiation hf must be equal to uh, the work function hf naught plus the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. Then also remember that maximum kinetic energy, which is a half MeV squared, can also be given by EVS, where E is the charge of an electron, then of course Vs is the stopping potential. Now from this particular equation, I want to make Vs to be subject of the formula because you can see here Vs is on the y-axis. So I want that equation to go to, to go to the form of y is equals to mx plus c. So I would like to make the uh, Vs to be subject of this particular formula. So for me to achieve that, I'm going to take a hf naught to the other side so that I remain with EVS on one side alone. So which can be written as EVS is equals to hf minus hf naught. Then I want to divide through by the charge of the electron so that I remain with a Vs. So I divide through by the charge of the electron E, divide through by E, divide through by E. So of course the charge of electron will cancel out. So E and E will cancel out so that we remain with Vs, which is the stopping potential, being equal to Hf over E minus, remember, Hf. Hf naught is equal to the work function. So this is a Hf naught over E. But we know that work function is equal to uh, the Planck's constant multiplied by the threshold frequency, Hf. So where I have Hf naught, I want to substitute with a W naught, which is the work function. So this equation will be the work function W naught, then divided by E. So uh, I now I can separate this term so that I can write this one as H over E multiplied by F, which is just uh, H over E multiplied by F, uh, then minus, of course, the work function W naught over E. Now this equation is now in the form Y is equals to MX plus C. So the reason why I'm comparing to Y is equals MX plus C is because Y is equals MX plus C represents the equation of a straight line graph. And you can see uh, the graph of stopping potential against the frequency uh, of the uh, incident radiation is also a straight line graph. So you can see my Vs, which, which is on the vertical axis, is rhyming with my value of Y. So Vs is rhyming with uh, the value of Y. Then also you can see that frequency is uh, rhyming with my value of x because the frequency is on the horizontal axis. It has to rhyme with the values along the x-axis or the horizontal axis. So once you arrange this equation here, remember that m usually represents the gradient. That is from uh, mathematics. Uh. Therefore, m represents the gradient or the slope. So from this equation, we can see that m will be equal to h over e. Of course, where h is the Planck's constant, then e is the charge of an electron. So from this equation, if I compare corresponding terms, then m, which is equal to the slope or the gradient, will be given by h over e. So that if we want to get the Planck's constant, we are going to multiply both sides of the equation by the charge of the electron e. Therefore, uh, h, which is the Planck's constant, will be equal to charge of the electron multiplied by the slope or the gradient of that particular graph. So if you're asked to find uh, the Planck's constant, you simply take charge of an electron, which is usually a constant, then you multiply by the gradient of this particular uh, graph. So you can see the gradient is equal to h 
H over E. That is if we compare these ones directly. Then um, uh, C represents the y-intercept or the vertical intercept in this particular case. So C from this equation is equivalent to negative W0 over E. Of course, where W0 is the work function divided by the charge of an electron. So you can see from our graph, the y-intercept or the vertical intercept is at this particular point. That is where the point where the, 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 uh, this particular straight line graph uh, cuts the v-axis, that is the stopping potential axis. So that is our vertical uh, intercept or the y-intercept. So at this point where the graph cuts the vertical intercept, that should give us the negative W0 over E, that is from this particular graph. Therefore, C, which is the uh, stopping potential intercept or the y-intercept, will be equal to the negative of work function divided by the charge of an electron. So this can help us to uh, find uh, the work function uh, w naught because remember e is usually a constant that is the charge of an electron then also at the frequency intercept so that is at f intercept so at this particular point where the graph cuts the f intercept then vs that is the stopping potential must be equal to zero remember in mathematics you are saying that at the x intercept the value of y is zero so it's simply the same concept huh? is only that the value of the y intercept the value of y in this particular case is actually the vs so at this particular point the value of stopping potential will actually be zero so at the frequency intercept the stopping potential is equals to zero therefore uh, the equation hf is equals to uh, hf not plus evs will uh, disintegrate to so remember this is simply the einstein's photoelectric equation but at the, uh, at the frequency intercept, the stopping potential is zero. Therefore, if I substitute zero where I have Vs, if I substitute zero here, this term will actually disappear. So this equation will remain as Hf is equals to Hf0. Therefore, the equation remains Hf is equals to Hf0 plus zero because the stopping potential is zero. Therefore, this term will disappear. So from this equation, we are remaining with Hf is equals to Hf0. If I divide both sides by H, I'll remain with frequency being equal to the threshold frequency. So that is why at this particular point, the frequency is F0. That is the threshold frequency. So that means that the value that you'll read at this particular point will be the threshold frequency. Therefore, uh, the F is equal to threshold frequency. Therefore, the F intercept is simply equal to at uh, the threshold frequency, which is uh, F0. Next. We analyze a graph of uh, maximum kinetic energy, Ke max, of the emitted photoelectrons against the frequency f of the incident radiation. Now, from our very first slide, we were able to see a table which had some sample values for the frequency f of the incident radiation, the stopping potential vs, and the maximum kinetic energy, Ke max, of the emitted photoelectrons. So from that table, it was clearly evident that an increase in the frequency f of the incident radiation will lead to an increase in the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted photoelectrons. Similarly, a decrease in the frequency f of the incident radiation will lead to an increase in the maximum kinetic energy, Ke max, of the emitted photoelectrons. So such a relationship is a direct proportionality relationship. That is why you can see the graph is a straight line graph also depicting direct proportionality between the Ke max and the frequency f of the incident radiation. So because this particular uh, graph is a straight line graph, we are going to compare to compare it with the equation of a straight line, which is usually y is equals to mx plus c. So I'm going to use the Einstein's photoelectric equation to convert it in the form y is equals to mx plus c. So for me to achieve that, remember Einstein's photoelectric equation stated that the energy of the incident radiation hf must be equal to the work function hf0 plus the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted photoelectron. So I'm going to rewrite a half mev squared max as ke max because my graph has Ke max against the uh, frequency. So I, I'm going to write Ke max to be subject of the formula so that it rhymes with the value on the y-axis or the vertical axis. So for me to achieve that, I'm going to take Hf0 to the other side so that I have Hf minus Hf0 being equal to Ke max, which can be rewritten as Ke max is equal to Hf minus Hf0. So Ke max is equal to Hf minus Hf0. 
are not so i can compare it to y is equals to mx plus c so you can see that what is on the y axis or on the vertical axis is rhyming with k e max so k e max was on the vertical axis you can see it is rhyming with the value of y which represents the vertical axis then what was on the x axis which is f is rhyming with uh, my frequency is rhyming with x so once you've written the equation in that particular format you simply compare directly so you can see that m which represents the gradient or the slope will be equal to uh, the Planck's constant h so m is equal to the gradient which is equal to h which is equal to the Planck's constant so if you want to find the Planck's constant you simply find the gradient of this particular graph it should be able to give you the uh, Planck's constant then if we look at the value of c which represents the ke max intercept or simply what we call in mathematics the y intercept you can see that the c which is the y intercept should give us the negative of hf naught then remember hf naught represents the work function huh? therefore c is equals to ke max intercept which is equals to negative hf naught which is equals to the negative of the work function so this is what we are calling the ke max intercept that is a point where this particular line cuts the ke max uh, intercept or the y intercept so uh, if you want to find the work function the work function you simply find the negative of this particular value here so the negative of the ke max uh, intercept should be able to give you the uh, negative of the work function then remember we can also find the work function in a different way so uh, at this particular point this is what we are calling the frequency intercept that is a point where the line cuts the uh, frequency uh, axis so remember at the x intercept the value of y is usually zero so similarly at the frequency intercept ke max will be zero so at the f intercept the frequency intercept the maximum kinetic energy uh, of the emitted photoelectrons will be zero hence ke max which is also uh, equal to hf minus hf naught will simply become so remember from this particular equation you can see ke max is equals to hf minus hf naught so if the ke max is zero it simply means that zero will be equal to hf minus hf naught so if zero is equals to hf minus hf naught if i make hf a subject of the formula i'll simply take negative hf naught to the other side so that if you add to zero you get hf naught therefore hf is equals to hf naught so dividing through by h will get the frequency being equal to the threshold frequency so the value that you read here will be equal to the threshold frequency f naught so because the gradient is equals to the Planck's constant and you also have the value here a, that is f naught is equals to the uh, the threshold frequency so we can also say that work function is equals to h f naught which of course h is the gradient then of course f naught is the value uh, of the frequency at this particular point so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that you will regret more about the things you never tried than the things you tried and failed so the quote is encouraging us to experiment different ideas in life different ideas in life remember that risk taking is the only way you can gain experience and become an expert at whatever thing you choose to do we should therefore be ready to suffer the pain of working hard towards our dreams so as to avoid suffering the pain of regret remember in life you either have to suffer the pain of hard work or suffer the pain of regret you cannot evade uh, both and lastly recall that emotions have a tendency of reducing the quality of the decisions we make therefore we should be careful not to make permanent permanent decisions based on our temporary emotions thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you'll get notified until next time this is kind tuition academy thank you very much